This is VCast 1 of Unit 5, dealing with earthquakes and volcanoes, and we're going to look specifically at some basics of earthquakes here in this video. So first off, what is an earthquake? If you've ever been in an earthquake, you, you know how to describe it, that the ground shakes, the building shook, uh, the dishes in your cabinets uh, will shake in, and that's just vibrations going through the Earth's crust, which is basically what an earthquake is. It's just the Earth uh, underneath your feet shaking. and other than the normal causes, there are some alternative causes that are kind of fun to just mention here real quick. Things like volcanoes. As magma is rising up through the volcano, it can cause the ground to shake. Meteor impacts all right, uh, can cause the uh, ground to, to be shaken. And even atomic blasts, large atomic bombs, when they explode, uh, it will actually cause the ground to shake. But what you want to think about with earthquakes is imagine you have two blocks. And if you're trying to, for example, slide those blocks blocks past one another, they may get stuck at a point. Right? And as they get stuck, uh, you keep pushing on it and you build up stress. All right? Stress is just a force. All right? And think of it another way. If you take a rubber band and you start to pull on the rubber band, you are putting it under a certain amount of stress. You're forcing it, you're pulling it. And just as that rubber band can build up this energy by you pulling on it and stretching out rocks that are uh, snagged together and you keep pushing, applying stress, they'll actually build up uh, the same kind of uh, elastic uh, energy. Now, this idea that we're, we're talking about is called elastic rebound. All right, elastic rebound theory basically states that just like rubber band that can be stretched, rocks can also be stretched. And as that rubber band is put under that stress, it will deform, all right? Now you can't, it's hard to think of a rock uh, like a rubber band, but it can be deformed, as in you can see in these pictures, in this uh, anticline, or excuse me, syncline and anticline, all right, all these folds. Rock can be deformed. And just like that rubber band, eventually, if you keep stressing it, all right, it might actually begin to reach its elastic limit where it can't stretch anymore. And if you push it a little bit more, it'll actually snap. All right. That snapping, that release of that energy that's been uh, built up is the earthquake that we're, uh, we're trying to study here. All right. And when it snaps, when rock snaps, we get these different faults. Like you can see right here, right? and right here, and here. We can see where that rock has given way. Right? Or in here. Get rid of those old ones. Right? You can see these lines of fracture right? from where the rock reached the elastic limit and could no longer uh, hold that stress that it was under and it uh, fractured. And even from an aerial view, you can see that these uh, orchard rows are offset right, as right along this fault line here. But there are three kinds of faults. Let's, let's talk about these. Faults are places where uh, the rock couldn't withstand that stress and actually gave. Right? And there are three kinds. We have this reverse fault. Now in a reverse fault, there is a compressional stress. Now that's an important idea, compressing. You're pushing it together. All right? And as it gets pushed together, the rock cannot hold and gets fractured. A normal fault is the complete opposite. All right? Normally, all right, the rock is being pulled apart. All right? This is called a tensional force. All right? Think of if you're pulling on a string, you're putting it under tension. All right, that is called a normal fault. And as the rock can't hold uh, that stress anymore, it fractures. Or like a strike slip. A strike slip all right, is when they're sliding past one another and they can't uh, hold that shearing stress anymore. Shears, like an, a scissors, the blades are moving past one another but not really going into one another. All right, that's called a strike slip. Now, from last unit when we dealt with plate boundaries, these are kind of the same idea they look like uh, they've just been renamed. But there is a big difference between a fault and uh, plate boundaries, okay? So we'll just leave it at that for now. But you have the reverse, normal, and strike slip. 
Uh, one little thing, uh, one last thing we need to talk about are the focus and epicenter. Now, that point at which the rock snags and builds up stress, eventually is going to give way. All right. And the point at which that rock actually fractures and breaks. All right. Or if you want to think about the rubber band, the point where it actually snaps apart. That's called the focus. Now, the focus is underground. Okay. Um, if we were to, though, draw a line directly above it to the surface, that is called the epicenter. We're going to be measuring um, or learning how to find where the epicenters are of these earthquakes here in a lab shortly. But that's all we need to cover in this VCAST. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow in class.